Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I just want to quickly run through the function of Oncoprint and how we can produce an Oncoprint figure uh, from just raw data. So if you're not familiar with Oncoprint, it's basically a genetic mutation table among different genes in for different samples. For example, what you see on screen right now where you can see genes on the row and you can see samples of patients in the vertical column. And either you have a deep deletion, you have amplification or mutation in a certain gene, it show up as a different color and how you can customize it so that it tells the story that you want to tell. But basically Oncoprint serves that purpose of telling mutation of gene among samples. So let's just go for the very beginning. So this is actually a part four of the complex heat map video series. So you can actually download uh, the code that you see right now in the video description down below. And if you need more help in a complex heat map environment, you can also refer to the four other video that I did in the whole January. So uh, there'll be three chapters understanding the Oncoprint syntax and they'll be using Oncoprint in real life, more representable of how you want to produce the uh, image for a certain publication, for example. And then chapter three is to actually use the raw data directly from TGCA BioLink and plotting in a TGCA visualized Oncoprint. So the, the preparation of the data is slightly different, but the concept of producing the print are, are, very, are very similar to each other. Okay, so once we have loaded up the library, uh, the first thing is to create the raw data table because when every time yet you actually do any kind of analysis, it's very important to understand what is the requirements of the input uh, for a certain function. For example, this is a, we are just do a read table uh, text connection. So what we have now is a is a matrix with text inside. So we have S1, S2, S3. You can imagine that as a patient one, patient two, and patient three. We have three gene, G1, G2, and G3. And in patient one, G1, we have an SNV and an Intel, which is an insertion, deletion, and uh, SNV is single nucleotide variation, and so on. Okay, so if you, some can have one, some can have two, and there could be multiple or more types of mutation onto a certain gene, onto a certain patient. But uh, the, the main difference between Oncoprint and the other heat map is, while the other heat map uses numerical input, this using, using a string as an input, okay? So just keep that in mind. So uh, just in case that you want to see, this is how we actually get, uh, just to get an idea of what's inside where, you know, uh, get type functions is, we just want to see how many uh, strings are inside a certain cell, and this is how we run it. So not super important for now, but you, you, you get the concept of what is inside each cell, basically. You have different strings representing different type of mutations. So let's just start uh, the original thing. So to, to actually run an Oncoprint, if you already have the raw data, it's pretty easy. You just load it directly. You can kind of see all the type of mutation that you have. So SNV uh, will be in a big block of red color, while in there will be a slice, thin slice in the middle, and you have the top and bottom sorry, you have the top and right annotation as the count of how many times it happens in G123 and S123. So of course, everything is on default and if you're happy with the default, you're good to go. But you know, most of the time we're not. So what we need to do is first thing, trying to do a bit of customization and uh, why it is what it is. So, so the first thing is to define the color. So we're gonna do yellow and purple just for fun. And it's just a, a little bit more unusual color to show you um, how do you change the color in the system? Uh, you can change to any color you want, okay? But the important thing is here, is the altering functions, okay? So altering function is a function that adds things onto your plot layer by layer. So just because it runs SNV doesn't mean that it will not run Intel. Most of the time, uh, it will actually run both if you have both mutation inside a single cell. So what it does is that uh, this is what you need to be taking notice on, a great uh, rectangular. So it's creating a rectangular with X, Y, W, and H. X and Y represent the location of the rectangular you want to plot. W represent the width and H represent the height. So you can see that in SNV, it's a big block with 90% of its original length and width. So it's slightly smaller, so we have some spacing in between. Uh, and X, uh, I added a 0 0.999, so that it's a little bit on the, on the left side, but feel free to adjust it to see what happens. So X and Y adjust up and down, left, right, and W and H adjust the size of the width and the size of the height. 
So as you can see in Indel, everything almost remain exactly the same, but height is reduced to 0.4, which is why if you look at Indel over there, the height is only 40% of the overall height. So mainly we try to do this so that the, the different colors won't overlap each other. And if there's both an SNV and an Indel, we can actually see on the plot that we have over here. Okay, so uh, the color, the, so the fill will be the color from the color list up there. Well, the, okay, the fill is what is inside. The color is actually the border line. So you can see we have black and green as the border. And once you run the whole thing, we can actually see that before the customization and after the customization, how does it look? So you can see that it changed to purple. You have changed the black border line and a green border line. And you can see that uh, the yellow and purple, while all other remain the same. So this is just to change the color and let you understand how does the alteration function actually works. So uh, that's the basic syntax. So once we get it figured out, now it's actually to, to deal with data that is a little bit more complicated and more representable of uh, real life. So this is another matrix which we're gonna override the previous data. But of course, it's gonna be a lot bigger because now you have, oh, how many patients are there? 172 different patients and we have 26 different genes, if I'm not wrong, something like that. Okay, so we have a huge matrix in certain gene and patient we have mutation, AMP and whole home down basically. Okay, so again, we're gonna have uh, alterating function for all three of them, which is home down. We have AMP, we have MUT over there, and we have a background function which define if there's nothing there, how does the back, how should the background look? Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing where we define the color for each of them. So if you don't know, this is just hex code. So the first two is red, the middle two is green, the last two is blue. So a mutation should be represented in green if, I am, if I'm right about the order. So basically that. Okay, so once we're done, basically you can see this individually is just, so it's a grid rectangular. So it's gonna be a rectangular with X and Y on the original location, but width is gonna be changed to a unit of two and each is gonna change to a unit of two. So you, you can change the, the, the height left and right all this based on just changing the, the alterating function. Not gonna go too deep into that because it's, it's kind of a, a lot of customization you can do. And you can actually, you remember that it can actually overlap each other if it happened twice. But uh, the basic concept is uh, X, Y, left, right, W, H, big and small. And you can change the color and the view based on the, the, the ground below on the G part. Okay, so again, we're gonna do the same for column title and heat map uh, legend parameters. So those has been covered in the complex heat map uh, build up, I think the first video. So I'll, I'm gonna link you to that in the video description down below or the bubble here if I can. So yeah, so once we're done, we can very simple just print out the, the matrix using the alterating function that we created out there with the color profile that we've created. And we're gonna add in a column title as the column title and heat map legend parameter as a heat map legend parameters. So we can actually find the heat map uh, legend on again our second video on how to customize the legend on a heat map. So the, the the original plot is actually quite great, but you know the the title is a bit too big. So what I'm gonna do is to string the title a little bit so we can see all of them nicely. So as you can see that mutation, I'm right in screen green color and the other two is in blue and red. And the, the count for each of the gene and each of the patient is actually done automatically. But of course, uh, the problem now is that we have a lot of empty column that we don't need. So we might want to throw those away so that our result is a bit more precise, which we can do that with a remove empty row and remove empty column. Uh, very simple uh, fun argument in our heat map, very straightforward. So you can see we got a much more, much more precise plot with all the empty columns and parameters removed. But we still get like CRAS and RAP25, DAP2 with most of the mutation, mostly in uh, CRAS is in mutation and RAP is in amplification and so on. Okay, so um, the next one is actually just the same thing. It's just that a little bit more uh, customization where we try to reorder the sample uh, onto the way that we want. So it really depends on what you want to do. In this case, I believe they're, they're, they're do it based on the sample order of the original system file, but you can feel free to adjust it based on however you want. Uh, to be honest, the easy way is to actually adjust the sample file in an Excel file, which is not the right way to do, but for people that fresh coming into this concept, uh, you can actually adjust the CSV to be the, to be the, 
what is that called? The order that you want, and then you can actually plot it directly over here and remove anything that is unnecessary. Uh, which is why we're using our own code print and we have not linked our data to TG TGCA uh, just yet. Okay, so next one, a little bit more customization again. Uh, just to make everything look nicer, look complete and so on. They just added a border, changed the way of plotting. Uh, nothing really much here to do. Where we have a top augmentation, where we try to do a bar plot and write annotation. Again, these are covered in the previous video on annotation. You can have a look at that and, and see what you can run with. Uh, more customization of it. So uh, this is actually more important. Every Onco print actually produces a heat map object. So where you can actually combine with some other heat map and gene expression that you want to just by adding it uh, with a plus sign to edit horizontally or a percent b percent to edit vertically so what i've demonstrated here is to just add it twice which is why you can see ht1 and ht1 is arranged on side by side basis but if you do have let's say a gene expression data as long as you have the same number of row you can actually add it on the right very easily or you have a gene expression data on the on the column so you can just add it vertically as well so i'm going to show you how to do it vertically on, on below Yep. So, but it's it's the same concept of combining heat map in the past. So, uh, usually that should be more than enough for most publication on on the latter. So, what we need to do later is actually link it to TGCA BioLink because most of the time we don't want to clean up our data themselves. We don't want to do one by one, and we want more of like a live data for a script or some automation process that we want to do. So, in this case, we are gonna use TGCA BioLink as a way of us to download data. In this case, we're using GDC Query and MF, and we are running tumor on ACC, which is a, a renal cardiocortical carcinoma. Uh, it's basically a cancer of the arena gland, okay? And we're gonna use the mutation detect pipeline to run the whole thing. And uh, so because the structure is so different from what we have just now, remember in Oncoprint, we have a matrix with just text within our cell. But in this case, if you look at MUT raw data here, uh, it's actually individual gene individual gene symbol and all the mutation that we have over here. So we, this is basically, I would say it's a long format, then that one is a wide format or vice versa, but the, the way of representing data is very different when you're using OncoPrint as a function or TGCA visualize OncoPrint as a function. So remember the input data is different. But the, the easy way is, of course, this will automatically give you the whole thing with remove empty column, Turn on and this just the number of gene is just the number of gene that you want it to produce in your print directly. So as you can see, TMEM247 has the most mutation and they're mostly deletion. And MACF1 has the most of the insertion for like 36% of the sample, not 36% of the sample. Yeah, 36% of the sample on something like that. Okay, so that's basically it. And of course, we can actually do a little bit more customization in this case on the color, on what kind of color do you want. And you might say, why do I need to change the color? So maybe you have other tables that you want to put together and you want to show the same color as the kind of story that you want to tell. Just more, a little bit more customization that you have. I might actually remove the empty column as well, just to make it look nicer, like what we have done on the previous plot. Okay, so the last one will be actually include the the clinical annotation onto our own code print directly. So I think it will take a while because this is a big table. Okay, so what this um, picture actually have is on the top, you can see there's a normal own code print that we produce up there. So this thing, we got the empty column removed. Oh, sorry, we haven't got the empty column removed, but they're just squeezed onto the top of the table. If you can see that, and then we are adding another annotation in the middle. So you can see disease are all the same. Gender, there's two colors, A, J, C, C stage, there's like four colors and so on. Yeah, stage one, two, three, four. And we have a few races, we have four races and battle status. So where does it come from? If you go to the clinic two, which is the, sorry. So before I do that, uh, annotation equals to clinic two. So the annotation below, oh wow, this has gone wrong. <laughs> So yeah, let me just print it again. So the annotation here is clinical two. So clinical two is basically just a table right here with all the things that we want to plot onto them, okay? So we can see that the patient barcode is here. So this will map towards our column. And we can see just now on disease, they're all the same color. 
because all the diseases are OACC. The gender has two gender, basically, still um, biologically. And the stage has stage one, two, three, four. The race has white, Asian, black, uh, black African American or not reported. And we have a life and date on, as their vital status. So this will indicate individually what is the status of the patient and what are the, the mutation that we have. So we can see that the gender are mostly the purple one, which is the female, uh, stage four, and the race is actually what? Most likely because of the background of where the data is collected. So yeah, so yeah, this is an print that can produce directly from TCGA data. So this is what I really want to show today, but don't stop here. The customization for print is incredibly complex and intricate. So if you do want to learn more, I'll put a link to the original script that I based mine on in the video description down below. And feel free to actually go there and continue on how do you write more customization function, altering functions and on print and combine things together. Um, again, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something about on print and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.